which is called the subject, and which is closely related to one of the favorite uh, topics for Serioja, who made his first works looking on difference equation of the second order, which is a difference uh, Sturm Lewin operator side n plus one plus b n side n plus c n minus one side n minus one. And what I'm going to speak about is would be some closely related to this classical equation zero or i psi in the theory of integral model. The subject of my talk is a very simple recurrence relation that turned out to be at the center in recent studies of various uh, problems in mathematics. So this is the difference equation or simple recurrence. Bi equals Ai1. So it's not powers, it's, it's just indices. Minus, again, it's customary in this theory to use alternating sign for some meaning. It's not so important. B i minus two, blah 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 blah, plus minus one to the power k, b i minus k minus one. So it's a simple recurrence, different situation of the order k plus one with periodic coefficients i a i j equals a so i. So, so there is no a. No, there's a Good question. No, this is the point. This uh -huh. is very special thing, uh -huh. which differs from what I wrote before, where we are arbitrary to function. No, this is the point. This is the current simulation having ones on both ends. So it's periodic, but it's uh, the. Also, I'll speak about just this problem. But I will be interested mostly about special case of this recurrence relation. Do you know that by relation for a couple of polynomials? No, it's just a it's a scalar variable, discrete variable, it's a recurrence relation. Right. Uh, but I will be and then up to of the order k. Plus one. So it's the recurrence relation of order k plus one with ones on both sides with periodic coefficients and with the property that all solutions of this equation, so all solutions, are also periodic. This is not trivial condition because if you have periodic Coefficient. The same period. The same period. This is the same period, yes. So usually when you have periodic operator, you have a monodromy. And this condition simply tells that the monodromy of this equation is trivial. All solutions are periodic. So this subject, uh, let me just explain the motivation why it's so easy. One, of other instances of this equation would be the study of uh, n bonds. So it's n bonds in projective space, P, K. Uh, why it's the same, I will explain. And the, because this difference equation turns out if k plus 1, which I will always assume, and n are co-prime, then the study of n bonds or configuration of n points in projective space is the same as the study of this totally periodic operator. By totally or completely, I mean that the periodic coefficients plus periodicity condition for all operators. So recent interest uh, in study of n bonds, it turns out because it was observed that this is a phase space for a discrete integrable system. Let me just show you this 
uh, this time integrable system on the space of n gons. I'll start first with uh, a, a statement from the high school geometry name. Take pentagon and define a new pentagon just by taking diagonals, consecutive diagonals. Okay, you will get a new pentagon working on intersection of the diagonals. Uh, it turns out it's the same up to scaling and rotation. So up to projective transformation. If you do this for perfect, no, any pentagon. So if you start with any pentagon, you construct a new pentagon, you will get the same pentagon. But if you start with sextagon or whatever, n one, you will get a new one. And it turns out that this is, you can think about as a discrete time dynamical system sending one configuration of points to another. And this, and you can interact. And this is integrable system. Moreover, it's integrable in all sense. Uh, it turns out on the space of n bonds there is a natural symplectic form. There is uh, half of the dimension uh, <coughs> integrals <coughs> which are in, in, in evolution in, with respect to this form. So and this is completely integrable system. Moreover, if you send n to infinity, this in particular case where k equals two, in this case this system converges to Bushina's equation. And actually, there is now a whole machinery produced to integrable systems related to um, demand configurations. It's due to works of Kenyon, Vincherov, Kukov, and many others. There is a whole machinery to produce these integrable systems starting with various configurations. This is the simplest example. What is uh, the condition, how they related these two objects? Uh, take any set of points in the projective space. You can always lift them to a vector in, uh, in R or C, K plus 1. Just maybe um, any vector corresponding to projective space. Then, of course, if you have uh, vectors in k plus one dimensional space, any uh, uh, k plus one, uh, k plus two of them are related by different equation. There will be arbitrary coefficients, including this one. Then you require, I want to find such a thing to make this coefficient one, you that you need to define the, a difference equation. So n bonds and mm, difference equation with this property is just the same uh, object. And as I say, it's a part, and through this linear operator, it serves as a last operator for this discrete integrable system. And with the help of this difference operator, you need to start in the course of motion. There is another uh, object uh, deeply connected with two of them, uh, and it was introduced by Hoxeter and Conway in representation theory around the 70s, and it's called freeze ornament, the freeze pattern. And this is usually denoted by f k plus one n. K plus one means uh, this is SL k plus one is pattern. Mm -hmm. What is it? Pattern is a strip of numbers. You start by putting on the diagonal ones. You shift it by n minus k minus one, which is called width of the Sleep and put once here again. 
as the condition, so you feel by numbers, A, I, J, and the condition that defines that these freeze patterns is that all miners equal of, of uh, all miners of the size k plus one times k plus one uh, all miners equal one solid miners. You mean you take k plus one consecutive rows and k plus one consecutive. Uh, consecutive um, columns. Example, let me just write you an example. For example, so this is k equals 1, so this is SL2 freeze pattern of the white, white 2. So you start 1, a, B, arbitrary numbers, 1, 1 here, so this determinant is 1. You want to have this determinant to be uh, 1 as well, so it becomes B plus 1 over A. The next one would be A plus B plus 1 over A, B, 1, and you start continuing this procedure. Uh, and remarkably, you will find, you expect that this rational combination will become more complex. But remarkably, it turns out that after five steps in here, you will get the same numbers, A and B. And this is nothing but periodicity conjecture by the homologica for Y systems. So through this connection with the freeze pattern, there is a proof of the homologic conjecture for solutions. Yeah, yeah. It's the same guy who is very famous with crystallography. Coxsecker? Yeah. Yes, reflection groups. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's his tool for studying representation theory. Yeah. Again, you see, n bonds representation. Any relation to clusters? It's a cluster algebra. Yeah. It's bilinear hierarchical equation. In all these now very active areas, this Simple recurrence relation can play a central role. It's a cluster algebra. Uh, this is the property that instead of increasing complexity at the end, you have a solution. And there's a classification of theories. Okay. Uh, my main, the starting point of the uh, work that I'm going to do for now uh, was a Relatively recent, less than a year ago, observation by Tabachnikov, Obsidienko, and Schwartz about duality. It turns out that the space of n periodic k plus 1 recurrence relation, totally periodic, is canonically isomorphic to the space of recurrence relation of the different order with the same people. And it was called Gale Transform, Combinatorial Gale Transform. Gale? Yes, this is classical game of duality between configuration of points in projective space. This is a generalization of this Gale Transform. And in fact, this a particular case of this Gale Transform, this combinatorial Gale Transform, was known to Gauss. All the pentagram verificum, he was so surprised. So Gauss observation in his study of some number theory problems was the following. Start with the recurrence relation V i V i V i minus one minus V i V i minus two plus V i minus three. Assuming that A i and V i are five periodic. I plus 5 equals B, I plus 5. Then all solutions for this equation also 5 periodic. So there is a theory for it. I'm stating the result of Gauss. I can't say it's a result, it's an observation. What was his uh, motivation? 
<laughs> Number three. Anyway, you should just check it. But right. No, I, I, have, I haven't made a statement. His observation was considered recurrence with five periodic coefficients with the property that all solutions are five periodic. Then, if you look on the recurrence of the... So, to, to, to get this, you should choose the initial data. Okay, right? No, I don't. Oh, it is a claim that oh, all solutions are, are periodic. Are five periodic? Yes, this is the... Okay, oh, so the condition... Let's just say it. If you consider the differential equation, uh, the difference equation of order k plus one, what's the total dimension? So we have here ten dimensional space, five periodicity for a and b. So the total dimensional recurrence relation of this form is ten. The condition that uh, <coughs> The monodromy is 3 by 3 matrix, which is SL1. So there are eight conditions that it is scalar. So the total dimension of such pairs is uh, So I runs from all positive. I it's five periodic. So I runs from minus infinity to plus infinity, but it's periodic. Mm -hmm. So the total dimension of coefficient is 10. There are eight conditions needed to require that this is satisfied. So totally, it's two ah, dimensional yeah. space. You, you impose I impose the condition uh -huh. on A, I, and B, I. Uh -huh. It's right. not I, it does. Uh, now, his observation was that if you now consider a, di a difference equation of the second order with the same I, A, I, minus W, I minus 1, W, I minus 2, then all solutions of this equation would be also periodic. So, you see, just forget about this big guy. It's a completely different. Okay, now, consider here. So it was 10 minus 8 condition. Here you have 5 arbitrary coefficients, but the condition that periodicity for all solution is 3. So it's, you have 5 minus 3. The dimension is the same. But actually, they're defined by 8 equations in 10 dimensional space or 3 equations in 5 dimensional space. And there, okay, here, this duality is very simple. So forget about the other. the same A bar. And you get this observation. So that was discovered to me. I was looking. How one can just explain this Gauss Mirificum or more general gene transform because these guys, the Vashnik of Schwartz, they wrote explicit formulas for the efficient relating different uh, equations mm -hmm. on both sides, one from another, by huge determinant type formula. I'm sorry, there is single object, object with bi or not? Mm -hmm. With only bi, huh? No. No. So, in fact, what it claims is actually bi's are uniquely Okay, so. Now I want to return back to this equation and explain what I was trying to do and what was a new object that now can be connected with all these this space of uh, this periodic difference equation, the space of n bonds, and the space of freeze patterns. Okay. Uh, all, oh, I can continue cluster algebras. Algebras. And, and, and so on. So, it was. Uh, what one can say looking on a different situation. One of the lessons we gained from the theory of integrable systems 
is that you, uh, you can say very few, uh, very little about difference equation if it doesn't contain a spectral parameter. So I decided to look at this equation uh, from the point of view of spectral theory. Namely, just let's put consider this equation as a just particular case of the eigenvalue uh, eigenvalue problem for difference equation for difference operator, which is uh, <clears throat> far from being suffer joint. It's 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 triangle. It's as far as possible from self adjoint case. Yeah, right? No, I, I will do it probably as uh, skating thing it should be also would be of interest in this theory. I did purely periodic case. So I will consider spectral theory of such triangle operators. I will consider triangle operators of the form T k plus 1, so the leading coefficient is 1, plus some <coughs> a i j t j t is a shift, shift by 1. Uh, for a moment, yes, I'll start with, with a, just for, for um, I want to start with the spectral theory for just periodic triangle operator that has never been considered before. <coughs> no, I'll put later on this condition. I will not forget about it. But right now, I just want to consider. One of the reasons why it was so interesting for me, because if you compare, so this is polynomial equation, or in particular, let's take k equals, two, uh, equals 1. Then you have the equation psi i plus a i psi i minus 1 plus psi i minus 2. This is the equation we start with. Psi is the same as that v? Yes, psi is the same as that uh, You see, maybe v, I'll keep v as a solution for e equals uh, 1, as a solution for with this periodic condition. Now, just what I'm saying that this is okay up to a shift of indices. This is the same, almost the same equation: c i psi i plus b i psi i minus one plus c. Okay, by gauge transformation, I can always make the second, the last term equals one. So this is the equation considered. As a lux operator for totalities. And I remember we tried many times with Novikov to look at <coughs> uh, the spectral theory of such operator is well developed. And there is no reduction way to single out good spectral data corresponding to Ci equals 1. It's not compatible with any classical spectral considerations. Here it turns out. That you can treat this equation now with little coefficient one, but in a slightly different manner. So I just want to put the spectral parameter in a wrong place. So this is this is the difference operator, and this j runs from one to k. So it is just polynomial in shift. So if you look. If you represent it as a matrix, it is upper triangle matrix, so zeros on the diagonal, it's order k plus 1, and here are coefficients periodic points. This is the spectral theory we want to do. Okay, so, and usual. What you do when you have periodic periodic operator, uh, you look on block solutions. So I want to consider eigenvalue problem for such a periodic and describe block solutions. 
which are solutions of this equation. Can block multiplier W, so I plus N equals psi I. And as usual, in the standard way, as usual, uh, what one can get the dispersional relation between uh, block multiplier and energy, although energy is somehow it's, it's not so far joined, so it's just it's complex parameter. It's, um, treat E as a real, and we don't discuss tensors of this operator. We just look at this from pure algebraic geometry, algebraic point of view. So the equation, dispersion relation between W and E the, is defined by standard means. You just consider the characteristic equation for the monodromy matrix on monodromy operator restricted to the space of this, uh, to the space of solution such system. You get a dispersion relation, but the point is that this relation turns out to be of very specific. So far, this is just general Remarkable property is that the equation has a very specific form. I'll write an example. So k equals 1 as always. In k plus 1 minus e to the power n plus sum r i j w i e to the power j. Uh, equals zero, and summation here is taken over a set of indices. First of all, i is bigger z than zero. This is an extremely, extremely important property. And then i times uh, i times n plus k plus one times j should be less than k plus one times n. So this is the set indices. Example. I will write an example and then compare it with the spectral theory of periodic uh, discrete Schrodinger equation. Okay. Uh, so example, k equals 1. Again, I want to be as close to the user's interest as possible. And in this case, we have the equation psi i equals d i psi i minus 1. I'm not keeping track of signs. So e psi plus psi i minus 2. So we have a set of numbers, periodic ones. In this case, period has to be, you remember I said, k plus 1, so 2 should be co-prime to the period. So what I'm saying is applied for periods uh, that are odd. So it's m plus 1. And if you consider the spectral equation for such an operator, it has a form w square second order plus q m e. It's arbitrary polynomial of degree uh, m made from a. Sorry, made from coefficients a. Yes, the coefficients are polynomial functions of a. Okay. Sorry, and they they they, they are first cities as usual. W minus e to the power 2m plus 1. This is the equation of, of the curve. It seems it's the usual hyperbolic curve, which is as the infinity has a, because it's uh, odd order, it has branching at the infinity. So if you consider it as hyperbolic curve, it has uh, it holds and look on the gap structure. 
Then it goes to infinity, there is something, and it's two sheeted cover. Uh, the function w, if you look on, okay, there is, so there is one special point on this hyperelectric curve, infinity, there is plus point. The rest is seems there is nothing special about such a curve, but it turns out that there is a special, there is one extra special point on such a curve. And this special point is, okay, what is obvious solution to this system? Because <coughs> P equals zero and W equals zero. Clearly it is satisfied. But remarkable thing that W is that there is actually for uh, for E equals zero, there are two solutions of this equation. One is zero, the other one is not. So, if you look on solutions of this equation as two-sheeted cover of an E plane, then on top of E equals zero, there is one special point where W equals zero, and the other is, is, is a regular. What is important is that near this point, W has zero of the so order. In the case of e, uh, Q of zero is zero. Yes. And this condition, uh, that Q zero is not zero, corresponds to the case which we naturally assume that A i's are not zero. Because uh, this coefficient is just a product of these four i's. And usually it's a normal. Assume to, that the x uh, edge coefficients are not zero. We don't want uh, the order of difference equation, difference operator to jump. So in this case, there is a very special point, and so it comes at this point. W has a zero of order n. At the infinity, W has a pole of order n. So there are no any zeros. Of this, so it's a hyperelliptic curve that comes with two two marked points. Mm. Okay, now I just want to compare this spectral curve with the spectral curve corresponding to more standard. Uh, Sturm-Liouville operator and uh, the i psi i plus b i psi i minus one plus psi i minus two. So the difference, what is the spectral problem for this operator? It seems without putting a, if you treat it as one, it seems the same. So what's the difference? between these two cases. We put energy eigenvalue in a wrong place because in standard case E stands in the middle coefficient. So it turns out that the spectral theory pretty much depends on how you where you put the spectral parameter. For these operators the spectral curve is of the different form. It's Q, N of E. It has more parameters. It's polynomial of degree N, W plus 1 equals 0. And this is a family of spectral curves that, okay, there is no time for me to say about connection between the various families of curves and uh, solutions to slightly written solutions to n equals two supersymmetric gauge model. So this is a supersymmetric model corresponding to S gauge group S of n. And it parameterizes all non-trivial platform in this supersymmetric model. What is the counterpart for this family? <coughs> I still don't know, but probably it's confusion. Right now, Six minutes. Six minutes. Uh, mm, six minutes. I'll spend two while I'm 
to make a disclaimer for Gauss, me, me, just playing the game with this spectral theory, you will find something that after a posterior you can explain very easily. So now I'm going to explain you what is the game transform. The game transform turns out to be very simple. It turns out that if you have operator L, which is in E k plus 1 n, then there exists an operator L tilde in E n minus k minus 1 n, which is generically unique, uh, which commutes with L tilde. And commuting different operators is a background for all integrable uh, exact solutions for integral systems. So the claim is for any L there exists a commuting operator such that actually uh, minus, minus, minus one to the power k plus one. So this is the shift operator. And it turns out that it is factorizable. It is divisible by L plus 1 uh, and L tilde plus minus 1 to the power K. Uh, so there exists a operator such that this operator identity holds. Uh, and this is also it. And is the game transform. Is the game transform. Mm -hmm. And moreover, this is the characterization. The inverse statement is correct. If there exists an operator, if you consider arbitrary periodic operator without requirement that all solutions are given, and if there exists a computing one, then it's. Gauss? Sorry? Gauss. Gauss is the particular case of this statement for k equals. Uh, 1 and equals 2. Now, why it is obvious that this operator is factorizable? Recall the basic facts from the theory of ordinary differential equations. If you have a difference of differential operator, ordinary differential operator, whose kernel contains the kernel of another operator, then one is divisible by the other. That's but simple arguments. Now, what means that all solutions of this equation are periodic? The kernel of this operator is contained in the kernel of this one. So it is divisible. You need some work to, to see, to identify this operator with the game U in the way how it, is, it was defined, but it's just relatively simple. So this is the explanation of the uh, Gauss mean to start with n equals 5. This is of order 3. It is divisible. You get the operator of order 2. And, uh, and this is the key. Uh, this is the Gauss mean. So it's nothing by divisibility, by <coughs> factorization of one operator by another. Uh, now I just want to say, uh, uh, it remains only to say a few words. There is also a whole machinery how to, that on any difference operator or any differential operator, there exists a canonical symplectic structure which spectral data are spectral uh, integral coefficients of spectral curve and angles on the Jacobian are action angle variables. So the question was uh, to compute this symplectic form that can be defined. Again, I'll speak the simplicity about only this difference, uh, difference operator uh, of the second order plus psi i minus 2. Again, this is the space ai runs from 1 to a to m plus one. So on this space there should be some symplectic structure whose 
the book coordinates are given by this spectral transform. What is this structure? Again, some groups. First of all, there is no synthetic structure because it's four dimensional, but it's Poisson molecules. And uh, symplectic leaves are defined by just a product. You have to fix a product in Sakadini. After that, there is the even dimensional, two and dimensional space, and symplectic structure, uh, canonical synchronicity symplectic structure, turns out to be of the form dxi, which dxi plus one. Just constant with uh, two consecutive terms where ai are e to the power xi. It's log constant symplectic form, which is again standard in the theory of DBR uh, configurations, cluster algebra transform. I have a question. Yeah. Is it so, are you finished? I hope it's only a beginning of some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because there is a connection. It turns out that all this classical algebra is a part of the theory of two dimensional totalities. Uh, okay. So I stop here. <laughs> okay. Let's end the speaker. So, first you, you study, you take a Lame equation and replace the second derivative by second difference. Yeah. Would you modify the potential to construct the okay. in the is, uh, 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 elliptic functions? Uh, it's not directly related to this, but that's a yes. And that was a work of our work with Zabrodin around 95, when we constructed different analogs of uh, Lame equation. Uh -huh. you, Where, you and that gives a... Uh, yes, and that was the... Uh, five dimensional it's related to five dimensional representation of scaling algebra. With, uh, so it, you see, for uh, it more interesting, not just for Lame, what we need, we need generalization for equation second dx over dx yeah. plus m, m plus yeah, one yeah. over two p function. So this, this m is, is, a, is a spin of this system. M, M, M is kind of integer. Yes. But it's actually integer lambda equation. So? Oh, M, M plus 1. So the usual lambda, the way you wrote, is for M equals 1. It's been. No, no, no. And an integer. Okay. For all integers constructed. Yeah, of course. All, of the, uh, all integer solutions. Get, but your solution is also in the analytic frame. Yes, yes. In terms of difference, we constructed different analogs of. Uh, well, of you, you, you should send it to me. Okay. So, let us thank the speaker again. Now, the next speaker.